Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Toyota RAV4. Now there are quite a few different ways to configure the RAV4. You can get it with front wheel drive or all wheel drive with a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine. There is also a hybrid model if you want better fuel economy, which is all wheel drive and it has an electric motor which powers the rear axle. And there's also an electric motor up front in addition to the 2.5 liter engine. Now we are in the SE all wheel drive trim. And so with this, we have a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder under the hood, dual overhead cams with variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. This is producing 176 horsepower and 172 pound feet of torque, which it's sending through a six speed automatic transmission to all four wheels. Now, as far as the all wheel drive system, for the rear axle, there's an electromagnetic coupling. And so it can decouple from the rear and send 100% of the torque to the front wheels when you don't need to send power to the rear and you can get better fuel economy as a result. So this is seeing 22 in the city, 29 on the highway, which is pretty decent for all wheel drive. There certainly are models which get better fuel economy with all wheel drive, uh, but there are also models which do worse. So that electromagnetic coupling, whenever you need traction in the rear, it will lock up and then you can send up to 50% of the torque to the rear axle. So up to 100% to the front axle and up to 50-50 split uh, with the rear locked up. And you actually do have a button uh, down here beside the steering wheel where you can manually select to lock up that rear uh, coupler so that you always have that 50-50 torque split. One of the cool things I do like about the all-wheel drive system is it gives you a display which shows you how much power is being sent to each wheel. And so you can see uh, when it's basically cut off the rear axle and then when you're in off-road scenarios like I am now, you can see that it's sending even power to all four wheels. And then you can lock that up and so it flashes and then once it's locked up you'll never see the difference between each of the individual wheels change they're always going to be uh, showing the exact same amount of power to each wheel once it's locked up because you've locked up that 50 50 split and then you can turn that off and depending on the scenario it'll send more torque to the front wheel so there you can see the front having more than the rear now as far as the interior, comfortable seats, decent bolstering, I kind of like the two-tone uh, leather where they've got the brown on the outside and then black on the inside, kind of looks cool. Uh, and you know, plenty of space for the most part. My knee does come fairly close to the steering column, uh, but you do have telescoping and you can move the steering wheel up and down, uh, so that's nice. Regarding visibility, out the front is really good and to the sides is really good. Looking out the rear is a bit more cramped. They've kind of closed up that rear window, uh, you know, and maybe that's a styling thing or whatever, but it is a little bit more cramped up in the rear. That said, it does have a really nice reverse camera. So when you do put it in reverse, you can see here it shows you these lines and it actually shows you an above like a bird's eye view of your vehicle and so as you turn it actually shows you uh, those arrows what they look like behind you and then what's actually happening uh, on the ground behind you so it's kind of a cool camera view the way that it changes and you can even see like you know let's say you're parallel parking or something like that you can see how you're coming in here with this 360 degree camera as well as the lines which which aid you and there's also the option to change through uh, the different views there. As far as the practicality, there's all kinds of storage space up front. You've got two nice large cup holders and some other little storage spaces. You also have uh, plenty of rear legroom and headroom. Actually, I sat in all three seats back there uh, behind myself with this seat adjusted. I had plenty of legroom and headroom. I could even sit in the middle uh, back there. And they also have a clever little uh, basically storage area for that third passenger uh, back there, their seat belt, uh, which comes down from uh, the roof back there, which is kind of cool. There's also plenty of storage space in the back and you can fold down those rear seats if you need even more. So plenty of storage space. You know, you can fit four adults, maybe even five in here without things being too cramped uh, and still plenty of storage space in the back. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that for an SUV with all wheel drive, there really isn't that much ground clearance. 6.3 inches and to put that into perspective that's less than half an inch more than my 2014 Subaru STI which is of course you know a sports car like yeah it's made to you know it's got a little rally in it but uh, you know overall it's made to be a sports car and yet it has uh, nearly the same ground clearance as this Toyota RAV4 
And so, you know, that can be a little disappointing in off-road scenarios where you would want a little bit more ground clearance. There are certainly models available with all-wheel drive with an extra two plus inches of ground clearance uh, in the same price range and even with better fuel economy. Uh, so I would say probably the biggest drawback from the all-wheel drive trim of the RAV4 is the fact that it's lacking ground clearance. Now the vehicle does come with paddle shifters and you know they're okay to use like any uh, planetary automatic gearbox, they're a little slow to respond, uh, but the shifting is smooth. One of the things that Toyota does a little differently than pretty much everyone else is that with the paddle shifters you basically just set the maximum gear that you're going to allow uh, the transmission to go in and then it's pretty much still automatically controlled uh, by the computer. So the computer controls which gear, you just set the maximum gear. So if I put it down to two, the maximum gear it can be in is second gear. If I put it down to one it forces it to downshift into first gear but aside from that if I leave it at like fourth for example out here it's never going to get up into fourth at these low speeds and so it just stays in first or second or third or whatever uh, and does all the logic for you so you know kind of interesting that it doesn't allow you to fully choose which gear you want to be in I think it'd be nice to have full control but uh, one way or the other you know if you are coming down a hill and you want to use engine braking you can certainly set the maximum gear so that it forces it uh, into you know for example second gear so that that slows you down rather than just your brakes okay so we've entered the automotive off-road playground uh, and so we're going to do some testing on this hill so the first thing i'm going to do is just kind of creep up this hill and see how the all-wheel drive system does i'm not going to press the lock button for this first test and just see how it does without it and see how it distributes the torque in order to get up and over so right now it's showing equal torque distribution to all four wheels it's about 41 outside Oop, loss of traction and it has been raining all morning so it doesn't want to go over there and that was without using that all-wheel drive lock we kind of dug out a little hole over there uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and press that all-wheel drive lock button it's gonna lock it up and we'll see how it does take a slightly different path so we're not going over that same dugout area and just slowly creep over and so it's not wanting to go over now conditions aren't that great you know 41 all season tires and it has been raining all morning as I mentioned uh, so I'm just gonna do this with a little bit more speed and see how it does so it did say that traction came off a little bit there uh, but no problem with taking it with a little bit of speed so now let's try this uh, at a bit of an angle and see how it does I do have the lock on I don't think there's a way to disable traction control I haven't seen a button in here for it because it does start to kill power once uh, traction control kicks on but I don't see any buttons in here for disabling that so now let's try that uh, going up the hill in reverse and seeing how it does that may give it a slight advantage because it can send more power to the front and since the front end will be down uh, it will have more weight on it and so it might be able to go over better this rear view camera comes in pretty handy here with that 360 degree view straighten out a little bit so it's not holding uh, so it looks like it's pretty challenging for it to get over you know it's going to need different tires and you know possibly uh, an ability to disable the traction control because when it kills the engine is when it starts to slide back down seem to do okay going over at an angle and if you take it with speed it does just fine um, you know so there are scenarios where it's all right no problem getting over there 
Okay, so I looked in the owner's manual and sadly uh, the traction control button is right in front of me. It's right here above the tune scroll uh, button, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the traction control off. I've got it uh, locked up for that rear axle and we're going to do this test one more time and see how it does with the traction control off. And if we start just throwing too many uh, rocks then I'm just going to stop. So just creeping over, creeping over, and it's just going to toss rocks. Yep, so these tires are not going to hook up on this surface. Um, so unfortunate that we can't get over the hill even with the traction control off uh, and with the center locked up, you just have to take it. Uh, with a little bit of speed in order to get over and then it does just fine um, but you know there are going to be scenarios where we're going to come to a stop uh, you know I think better tires would probably be the biggest difference it doesn't seem to use the brakes um, in order to send more power to the wheel that isn't slipping so that also might be something to add I'm not sure if it does it or not but it doesn't seem like it it seems to just spin fairly easily so overall you know it certainly is a practical option for this segment plenty of space for the rear passengers plenty of cargo space and all with decent fuel economy you know it may not be the best off-road and you know coming with that the lack of ground clearance uh, as well as the lack of traction going up that hill which I was demonstrating I think better tires would have made a big difference there uh, but overall, you know, there are probably better options for off-road. But that said, you know, a lot of the people in this crossover segment probably aren't going to need to go off-road ever, and they're probably never going to leave the pavement. So this is a solid, reliable option for the crossover segment. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Go over this hill one more time. Whee!